Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Ace Magic laptop, model number AX15. I'm gonna open it up, show you how to get inside, and take you on a quick teardown or disassembly tour, show you many of the various components you can access once you're in. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip the computer over to access our bottom case screws. So you have four screws along the bottom, two screws in the middle, four more screws on top. Now keep in mind on one of these screws in the corner, there was a sticker on it uh, to tell them if you've gained entry to the computer or not. So just keep that in mind. If you see any stickers like that on various screws inside the computer, it could void part or all of your warranty. So just keep that in mind. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these screws. Another thing to mention is not all screws are the same size. As you can see here, most of these screws were the small screw there, but those two hinge corner ones were the long screws. So keep that in mind when you're going into a computer, keep your screws separate, make sure you know where they go. So after removing all these screws, I'm gonna take my small flat metal pry tool. I'm gonna to go across the seam of the bottom case and carefully take it up from the rest of the computer. Oop, that comes up very easily actually. And as you can see, there's nothing on the, on the bottom. It's, it's just a bottom panel, but that came up very, very easily. It, it doesn't seem like there's any clips or anything holding it down other than those screws. After you're inside, this is what you're looking at for the inside of the computer. Now, as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your computer project, there'll be a link above. Also below in the description, it'll be a list of tools and supplies that I use in my shop. Also in the description under that link, I will have another link. It'll be a list to all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer if you're looking to replace them or upgrade them. Now the first thing I do before touching anything in a computer is I'll either remove or at least unplug my battery. A computer is safest to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. So here's your battery right down here. Uh, there's a piece of black tape going across here, so I'm gonna take that up. Most likely that's where the battery is, is plugged in somewhere in there. So I'm gonna take that up very carefully because I don't wanna rip out anything that it's connected to. So nice and slow. See, it's on some wires there, so I'm gonna hold those wires down while I slowly remove that piece of tape. I don't want it pulling anything up. And then I'm gonna put this tape back down exactly where I found it when I'm done working on my computer. So it looks like the battery is held down by one, two, three, four screws. Maybe there's one in here. Let me take off this piece of tape as well. Yep, so there's one more screw there. Okay, so I'll put that carefully to the side. I'm gonna put that tape back after I'm done. And then after those five screws, it plugs into the motherboard right there. Looks like it came out a little. Uh, maybe it's a little loose, or maybe I made it a little loose by taking that tape out. So I'm gonna take a small, flat, plastic pry tool, and I'm gonna push it from each side of that clip, of that plug, until it comes out of that port. It's a little tight in there, but there. So that's how I unplug my battery. We want to avoid pulling on wires anywhere in a computer, if at all possible, just manipulate the plug. But when you pull on wires, sometimes you can pull the wire right out of that plug. And if you want to remove the battery, I'll go ahead and take out these five screws here. Now the battery should just come right up, and there it is. If you would like the battery specs for this battery in case you're looking for your own replacement, I will have them below in the description. Uh, I will also try to include a battery replacement option below in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. I guess the last thing to shout out about this type of operation, if you are here because your computer is not turning on, it could be a bad battery, 
but it could be something else. Most laptop computers should still turn on and function well if the battery's dead, if your charger's plugged in. So if your computer is not turning on, there may be something else wrong with it other than just a bad battery. In that case, I will have a video link above. Also below in the description, it'll be a tutorial video on how to troubleshoot and find the cause why a laptop may not be turning on. So your RAM is right there. It's got one single RAM port. This RAM here is DDR4. This is a 16 gigabyte stick, uh, 2666 megahertz. I will have the RAM specs below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement. I will also try to include a replacement and upgrade options in that link I told you about with all the upgrade and replacement parts for this computer. The way that RAM works is there's a spring-loaded metal arm on either side. You pull those apart from each other gently away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release and often pop up a little bit, and then you can just slide it out of that port right there. To put the RAM back in, as you can see, there's a long side and a short side, so you can only get it in one way. You can't get it in upside down. You just slide it into the port right there, make sure it's flush, make sure the gold area is nice and straight along that port, and then just simply push down, and those metal arms will grab onto it and hold it in place. I always recommend my customers, if you want to upgrade your computer's performance, the best way to do that is maxing out your RAM, possibly even upgrading your solid state drive. Your solid state drive is right here. You have a single M.2 port for a 2280 size solid state drive. The one that comes in this computer looks like 512 gigabyte. Below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I will try to have a couple different options for solid state drives. If you're looking to just replace this one, you don't want to spend more than you have to. I'll have a replacement 512 gigabyte solid state drive. If you're looking to upgrade a little bit, I'll have a terabyte solid state drive in that list. In order to get that out, there's a piece of tape right here. So we'll just go ahead and gently take that off. Put that off to the side. And there's a single screw down here. You undo that single screw. That solid state drive releases and then you can slide it very easily out of that port. To install one, you would just slide it back into that port, make sure it's nice and flush and straight there. Then you would bring that screw back over, hold this down, and carefully screw that back in and that would secure it in place. I'm also going to make sure to put this piece of tape down here because it looks like it holds down the LCD cable away from that threading for that screw so that it doesn't pinch. So we'll do that. And I guess the last thing to mention about this operation, if you are replacing or upgrading your solid state drive, you most likely will need to install an operating system onto the new one after you install it. Above, as well as below in the description, I will have a video tutorial showing you how to install Windows 11 onto an Ace Magic computer. You have two speakers on each side of the computer. They go with this black and red wire over here, underneath your fan, down through here, and they plug into the motherboard right there. Now in other laptops that are a little more high-end, uh, these wires will run through threading, but it looks like they just clumped it together and used all that tape to hold it down. So make sure you put that tape down exactly the way it was because there's some screw threading here, some screw threading there, and we don't want to pinch these wires against it or damage it with our screw. So just make sure you uh, do that. It's a little pain in the butt. It's not the most quality way of, of running wires, but that's what you get with this kind of computer. You would take your small flat plastic pry tool. You would push on either side of that plug again, just like the battery. Maybe even using a fingernail on one side or two fingernails and pull that right out of the port right there. These speakers are not actually screwed down to the computer. They're just held down by double-sided tape, and they're put over these two posts there and these two posts there. So you can just wiggle those up. It may take a little bit, but you can take those up. Again, it's just double-sided tape underneath holding it down. So you can get those up with a little bit of force. I will try to have a speaker replacement option below in the description in that link I told you about 
with all the replacement parts and upgrade parts for this model computer. If you are having sound issues or sound quality issues, it is possible your speakers need to be replaced, but unless it's a blown speaker and you hear that junk sound every time the bass kicks in, if it's something else, you may be looking at a driver or system issue and your speakers may be fine. If you want to troubleshoot why your speakers aren't working, there'll be a video link above, also below in the description. It'll show you how to make sure all your drivers are updated and your system is healthy before moving on to an invasive repair like a speaker replacement. The way to get your Wi-Fi card out is you have a single screw right there. After removing this clear guard, you can take that screw out and this will unplug from the port and then you have these two antenna wire. The way the antenna wire work, those are just snaps. You would pull those directly up and off of the Wi-Fi card. And then to get them back on, they just snap back on, but they do need to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap back on. And you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and, and you try to force it. So just be patient, uh, go slow, get them at the right angle, and those should snap on no problem. If you are having Wi-Fi issues, if you cannot see your networks, if it looks like your Wi-Fi is not working, it could be a bad Wi-Fi card, you may need to replace it, but it also could be a driver or system issue. Before going into your computer to try an invasive repair and replace your Wi-Fi card, there'll be a video link above, also below in the description. It'll be a tutorial how to troubleshoot if your Wi-Fi is not working, you may be able to fix it without replacing your card. Your fan and your heat sink assembly are right here. Your fan is held down, it looks like, by three screws, and it plugs into the motherboard with the red, blue, yellow, and black wire right there. So again, we don't pull on wires as much as possible. We just pull on the plug, if at all possible. There are no grips on this, so it may be a little bit of a pain in the butt to wiggle that out. If you do need to grab the wires, make sure you use a pair of pliers or something. Try to get as much grip as you can on the plug and not the wires to wiggle that out. To get the fan out, you would undo these three screws. To get the heat sink off, you would undo these four screws. Now this is a new computer, so I'm not gonna undo that. When you do remove a heat sink and you expose the thermal paste to air, you do need to reapply that thermal paste. Once air gets in there, it, it's compromised. Uh, so if you are here, if your computer's overheating and you're looking to reapply thermal paste, there will be a video link below in the description. It'll be a tutorial in how to reapply thermal paste. You wanna clean all the old stuff off from both sides, from your heat sink and your CPU. You don't want to put new paste on top of old paste. And then the video will show you how to put down the right amount. You don't want to put too much or you could lock heat into the computer and the CPU instead of getting it out. Other than that, you have your touchpad ribbon cable here, your keyboard ribbon cable here, and your USB board ribbon cable here. Now these ribbon cables, uh, the way they connect are very fragile. I'll zoom in and I'll show you a little more what I'm talking about. The way this clip works is this black clip right here. It opens and shuts kind of like a book cover. It opens from this side near the ribbon cable and the hinges are on this side. And again, it opens like a book cover. So the way to get your ribbon cable out is you very gently, very carefully put a very flat pry tool underneath it on this side and pop it up like that. And then your ribbon cable comes out. And to put the ribbon cable back in, you would slide it in very gently, very carefully. Make sure that it's even and flat, which is kind of hard because this one is at an angle. And then you would gently push that down, holding it in place. And the reason why I wanted to focus on this is that if you do break this black uh, clip here or here or these small ones there, it's very difficult, probably impossible in a lot of cases to find a replacement. Uh, you would have to replace your motherboard or you would have to buy another motherboard and take it off of there. And taking one off and installing it, you're very likely to break it. So be very careful, do not break those clips when you're trying to remove and plug back in ribbon cables. Please remember to like and share if this was helpful, if you think it can help someone else. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY tutorials like this, or if you just wanna keep me on hand to answer any future computer questions you may have. I do try to answer all questions across my channel at least a couple times a day. So thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.